So in this video we're going to go through um, pose to pose animation using our character. This is going to be quite different from our previous um, videos or animations as in straight ahead or we take it step by step. This here is where we're going to block out key silhouettes uh, for our animation and then fine tune it at the end. It's a really good way of getting um, actions done uh, very quickly uh, and it's also good for making uh, appealing silhouettes for the audience to watch. The first thing that we want to do though is we want to go into your animation settings down here in the right hand corner. Make sure that we click on the animation tab and what we're going to do is these tangents we're going to set to linear for the top one and clamped or sorry stepped for the default out tangent. Basically what this is going to do is enable us to see only our silhouettes and it's not uh, going to play through in or interpolate the animation between frames or anything like that. So we save that. So basically if I keyframe in my fl floor here and then go to 7 and keyframe it in here, you'll notice that uh, my first keyframe is going to hold so it's clamped or stepped up until frame 6 and then after that it steps into the next one or the next value. It just means that I can flick between my key poses rather than seeing what is happening in between uh, the frames. So, first thing that we're going to do is key Nasi in his first pose. Uh, I'm basically going to have him falling down from the floor uh, to the ground and then stand back up. So I might have about 67 key silhouettes that I want to do. So to get him up in the air, uh, I'm going to click on his uh, main control points, okay, which are his two legs, his two knees, his two wrists, his two elbows, and his pelvic or pelvis here in the middle. So if I grab all those and move him up, he shouldn't change the silhouette. So. Now that I've got him up to a reasonable height, I'm going to start keyframing in our first pose. So what I'm going to go for is this Spider-Man type pose. You'll notice when I'm moving his legs up, uh, his knees are in an awkward area. So you might want to make sure that you have your knee placements in a proper place. Another thing I'm going to do is, well, I'm not going to do is I'm going to try and not have both sides exactly the same. Again, I'm just going to move his elbows as well, so they're sticking up. And I might rotate that down slightly, and then I might rotate his neck up. And I could possibly take his foot up. The thing about this is um, I could also come back and change these poses. <clears throat> so when I'm happy with that, I'm just going to grab all the control points and press S. And that's going to keyframe them all in. So that's my first one. I could probably go back and change a few things in this. Um, I might just put that hand out a bit more. Um, keyframe that in. And I could come like to the back, maybe move that over slightly. Keyframe that in. Maybe move his shoulders as well. I'm trying to just get an interest in pose. So the next one, uh, this is kind of like your squash, I suppose, is when he's going to be halfway down. And that's going to be when he stretches out. So again, I'm going to grab uh, my key control points. So his two hands, his two 
elbows, his two knees, his two feet, and his pelvis. And I'm going to move them down. Now I'm going to do this on frame four. So this is going to be quite a snappy fall. So frame four. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab his feet. And I might just go into my channel box editor and zero out those values. And then I can raise it up. Again, his knees in a funny angle, but we can change that. Grab his knee here, give it over. I'm going to rotate him around now as well. Move that one over and up slightly. And this time I'm going to have his neck. I'm just going to have him looking down. And his hands I'm just going to have above his head. Again, I'm doing this pretty quickly. Um, you should spend more time. Make sure his elbow is not in a weird position. So again, I'm just going to grab all this, press S to keyframe it in, and I can kind of <clears throat> scrub between these two frames now. So I could probably go in and tweak a bit more of that, to be honest. Um, put that in there. Seems okay. I'll get his neck looking more down. And then the next pose I'm going to put in frame seven. Again, I'm going to grab those key control points. So it's two feet, it's two knees, it's pelvis, two elbows, and two hands. And this here one is one he's going to be hitting the floor. So I'm going to try and get his pelvis near the floor because when he hits the ground, I want him to kind of lean over and uh, place his hands on the floor as well. Uh, so that should be okay for now. Uh, I'm going to get his legs again and just zero those out. Uh, they should be on the floor. Put that one over there. Grab this one. Zero these out. Grab his knee. Bend them over again. And grab his hands. I have to just move his hip down. Maybe bend it over slightly. I have to bend some of these over. I'm just trying to get him over as far as that I can move his hand down to the floor. That seems good. And now I'll just move the other hand down as well. Again, you can spend a lot longer than me working on these poses. Okay, I just bring him back up slightly. Bring the neck up slightly as well. Let's move 
this elbows and his knee. I might just move that one over slightly. And that one out like that. So again, I'm just going to grab everything and I'm just going to keyframe that in. So now we have our main pose is done. Next thing I want to do is I'm just going to have him basically bounce back up slightly. So in frame 7, uh, I might just bring him down slightly again. Keyframe that in frame 9, I'm just going to bring him up. Like that, just so we have that bit of a, a spring when he falls down. Um, and then um, when he's up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give him three or four frames and I'm just going to rotate his neck so that he's looking directly in front. I'm going to keyframe everything in again. So he moves up and then he looks. The next thing I want to do is I want to make him stand, but I want him to hold his pose for a bit. Uh, so I want to hold it for maybe five to six frames so that he isn't just looking straight up uh, and then standing up that he's holding his pose and then he'll, he'll try and stand up afterwards. So frame 16, I'll probably, what I'll do is I'll select all my control points and I'll just right click here and I'll copy those keyframes. And then frame, say, 17, I'll just paste them in there. So from 12 to 17, uh, we'll just have the same pose. Uh, it'll not really move. And now from 17 to probably 21, 22, <coughs> you'll get into the standing position. So I'm going to do that. Uh, again, I'm just going to get him to stand. Now I'm going to have to think about what foot he's going to put his weight on for this. So is he going to move over to this direction or is he going to move over to this direction? I'm going to choose this here one. So he's going to go over to his right foot. Um, so again, I'm just going to grab his hips and I'm going to zero those out. So he's standing up and then I'm going to move them over and I'm just going to move them down slightly. I'm going to grab the knee for this leg, move it into place, and then I'm going to also grab the foot for this one, something like that, and the knee, just move over like that. The neck, I'm going to just press zero, key that back in its original position, key this back in as well, and his hands, I'm just going to grab and move in, again his elbow is in the wrong position so I'm just going to kick that back. And then I'm going to move the other hand in. And I might just move it over slightly. And bring his hips down again. Too much. Just grab everything and I'll keyframe that in. So now he's going from here to there. So if we press play, just make sure that you're playing in real time. So if you want to do that, just right click on the play button, go playback speed real time. Uh, press play. It'll give us a good idea of how quick our animation is. So once we're happy with all our silhouettes, remember we can just go back into any of these keyframes and uh, change our silhouette to whatever we want. Um, but once we're happy, 
I'm just going to select all my control points and I'm going to go to Window, Animation Editors, Graph Editor. And you can see in here that our values are basically clamped and they're all linear. So they're going across until they come to a new keyframe. They're holding that value and then they're just stepping up to that new value. So there's no uh, linear or automatic or plateauing or anything like that. So what we want to do is, uh, I just pressed F there just to focus on all these keyframes. And I'm going to grab them all. And you can see here that you've got a plateau tangents. And I'm just going to click on that. So now all my tangents are plateaued, so it'll show these in between frames. So if I press play now, you can see that it's playing in between these. And there's a few things that we can change and kind of tidy up in the animation. One thing that we want to make sure though is that we go back into our settings and we go back into the animation and we make sure that these are both plateau now. Because if we're making any more adjustments to this, we want to make sure that they're... Um, like automatic and they're kind of curved in the graph that graph editor so first one I want to go to is 17 to 22 um, if we look there we can see that this leg just slides along so what I want to do is I want to grab that leg and I'm just going to grab and copy the keyframe for it because I don't want that leg to move quite just yet I want to hold it to maybe frame 19 just paste it in there and then after that there it's going to move over so maybe frame 20, I'll have it raised up. And then it steps down. Another thing is my hips in between. When he's doing this, I probably want him leaned over to one side. i maybe do that for the shoulders as well. Just to move his center of gravity a bit. Might also do that for the neck. So it just looks like a better animation. I could probably fix his hands as well. Um, if I go to the start of this, just to see if there's anything that I can change. One thing I noticed is that his legs are kind of crumpling up before it hits the floor. So what I could do there is, uh, well, I could probably go in and move his legs a bit, but they seem okay. So there's definitely a lot of tweaks that I could do and go back and change it. But overall, I'm pretty happy with it. So that's pose to pose animation um, and it works really well if you're doing like um, a blocked out scene that you've uh, pre-prepared using storyboards that you can get those nice silhouettes in and it's something that you should definitely use when you're animating a character.